Hi, I'm uh, Anton Burtness. I'm living in New Jersey right now, and I'm going to Rutgers in the fall to study math. And I'm here with Grandma up at the cabin. So what do you have to tell us today? Well, <laughs> I started out like in 1928 when I was born, and I'm up to 1958 right now. <laughs> but, uh, you know, time, time moves kind of slowly when you're mm. <laughs> trying to think about everything that happened in the past. So we're back to about 1958. <clears throat> Jim got his PhD in 1958, and we moved out to Oregon. He was pastor of a Lutheran church out there in Albany, Oregon. But then in 1960, we moved back to St. Paul again and to the seminary, and uh, the rest of Jim's teaching career was, was at Luther Seminary in St. Paul, so he was there like almost uh, 40 years or so. There were many other opportunities, and he there were... Or he, he could have chosen to go some other place or do some other thing or yeah. do an administration or something, but he just liked Luther Seminary and liked to stay there, so we stayed there all the time. Steve and Eric were born <clears throat> in Princeton in 1953 and 1955, and Deborah and Peter were born in Albany, Oregon, so we got to East Coast two West Coast people, they were born in 1958 and 1960. So these, there were four children, all absolutely beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> beautiful, gorgeous, gorgeous children. And uh, a, a really, really just really, really good, good, good children all the way through. Uh, they went to several schools, <clears throat> pardon me, when we were in Madras, they went to a British school. There was a British headmistress, Miss Mann, the Harrington House School in Madras. That was in 1963-64. Peter was three. Uh, Deb, Deborah was in kindergarten. Eric was in third grade and Stephen fourth. And the school just happened to take three-year-olds through fourth grade. <laughs> so they were at the beginning and the end of the whole, whole school thing. Uh, <clears throat> We had to drive him to school, like it was four times a day. It was uh, take him in the morning and go home. Go at noon and pick him up, take him home for lunch. Then go again and bring him back in the afternoon. And then go and pick him up at the end of the day again. Uh, Peter only went in the morning because he was just three years old, but, uh, uh, and Deb too. But uh, Steve and Eric had to go both morning and afternoon. So when we first came into India, and came into Calcutta and then came into Madras, I said, I'm never, ever going to drive in this city. It was just absolutely terrible. There were people all over the streets, just all over, and there were cows and there were, you know, water buffalo and people, people everywhere. And I think Madras at that time had, oh, I don't know, five or eight million people there. And, of course, Calcutta, now it has many, many more. And I said, I just would never, ever be able to drive in this town but after a few days you kind of get used to it and somebody said what you do is you just drive down the middle of the street and keep honking your horn the whole time <laughs> <laughs> and it was true out on the streets it was just it was just horns honking all the time and when Deb and I went back in uh, the fall of 19 no in 2006 after Jim had died it was exactly the same Everybody driving down the middle of the street and honking their horns. So the, the, the German professor and I were the ones that uh, divided up the, the, uh, the driving. And uh, so we managed to go and pick them up and go and pick them up. And go. Anyway, it, it was just a really, really a, a good, good school and British system. And everybody got along absolutely fine, just loved Loved the whole time there and the whole British way of doing things mm -hmm. and yeah it, it it was fun. Well then another year then this is in 1966-67 we were in West Berlin uh, at the John F Kennedy School and uh, here again Peter was in first grade Deb was in third grade Eric in sixth grade and Steve in seventh grade. Uh, the principal there at the time had just come when we came. His name was uh, Ru Rudy Lee, and he had uh, he was Jewish and had been born and brought up in West Berlin. But then his parents had left 
West Berlin to go to uh, New York in, in the 30s sometime or another. And so now he was coming back to teach in West Berlin. I think it was just really, really, I mean, his, I think his family was just wondering, why would you ever want to go back into, <laughs> yeah. you know, Berlin after everything that had happened? But he was, uh, he was really a good principal, and we got to know him. And uh, Deborah was in school with one of their children. They had two boys, Joshua and David. And, of course, the school was... Uh, <clears throat> was uh, it, it was really appealing to all of the German people, mm -hmm. so they would enroll their children practically when they were born yeah. to get into it because it was part of the Berlin uh, public school. And uh, but but the Americans were a little bit more hesitant. They wanted to have 50/50 German speaking and English speaking, but the Americans were a little bit more hesitant about having their children, especially if they were just there for a year or two, mm -hmm. to have to do German and and English. And so um, uh, it was like Peter in first grade. They spoke only German one week, and they spoke only mm -hmm. English the next week. <laughs> so he learned how to read, reading English one week and German the next week. And yeah. of course, he didn't know any German, so it was <laughs> a little bit difficult. But uh, he, he managed just fine. And the other kids were all taking, you know, maybe they were taking physics or chemistry or something. The, Stephen Eric and it was maybe in German and they didn't know any German <laughs> so it there were many things about it that was a, a little bit a little bit difficult for yeah. for you can imagine that yeah. <laughs> a yeah. little bit but um, <clears throat> Stephen and Eric were really good that year about take any visitors we had they would take they could take them all around Berlin <laughs> uh, downtown on the U-Bahn on the S-Bahn and take them to wherever they needed to go and tell them, go into, I can remember one friend, and I think he, he actually had taken German and everything as his language, but he, he wasn't very good at speaking it at, at a <laughs> store, and so I think Eric was taking him in there and telling him how to buy later hosen for his kids, you know, <laughs> talking, to the, talking to the clerks and everything. And I, I always felt a little bit safe with them going any place because West Berlin had a wall all the way around it, a fence yeah. all the, so you just felt like it was a big giant playpen of yeah. a couple of million people <laughs> and, and there they were. So, um, <clears throat> but I thought really interesting for Peter to learn how to read, reading English one week and German, yeah. German the next. So that was, that was kind of a thing. Well, then uh, another year when we were uh, overseas was in Oxford in 1973-74, and all four kids were again there, Peter in eighth grade, Deborah in tenth, Eric was in his first year of college, and Steve did come along and worked at the fish and chips place. He, did, he didn't want to go, and um, so we kept saying, well, if you stay, you know, you'll have to go and get an apartment and get a jo job mm -hmm. and everything. So at the last minute, he'd, he decided he would, would come. We didn't know what the possibilities would be, but we got him a, you know, plane ticket and everything, and thought if, if he doesn't go at the last minute, then we'd have to go to Plan B. I'd probably have to stay there until I saw, saw that he got situated. But yeah. he came, and it was just an absolutely great year. Eric had a really a great year, uh, first year at Oxford, just uh, doing the whole Oxford system and reading and all of the tutorial groups and all of So really it, it couldn't, couldn't have worked out better and Jim was uh, a guest professor there at the, one of the colleges there. So that was a good, good year. Actually there were many difficult and try, trying years with Steve and with a manic depression and how you how you uh, manage all of those things. It's, it's, it's really a very, very hard thing for him and then for the rest of the family too. But uh, we somehow muddled through and he was, uh, he, was, he was really, really a very, very good, good kind person. And I think all of the, the other three kids managed very well coping with all of that. And, doing all kinds of things, but that's another whole long, long story, I think. <laughs> they, were, they were really good, good kids. Some bumps along the road, you know, as you can imagine. Yeah. <laughs> you can imagine that. <laughs>
<clears throat> but I remember the 50 days between Madras and West Berlin, that was in 1964, I think we never once had to scold any of them. Any of them. <laughs> I think for one thing, they were maybe afraid that they'd get lost in you know, some foreign country or that we'd forget them or that they'd get stolen or something. But anyway, we thought afterwards, oh, we don't think that we ever had to just say, you know, watch out there. Or, you know, yeah. they just there was just no scolding at all. <clears throat> that was an exceptional time, those 50 days anyway. But... They, they were, but then there were other years, bumps again along the way. Uh, somehow I don't remember all of those bumpy times now. Maybe, <laughs> maybe my memory is going, but uh, I look back at them and I think, oh, they were really good years. They were really, really, really kind of fun and only happy times as I look back. And I think, well, that, well that's okay. I don't have to think about any of the any of the un unpleasant times. Uh, some of the good memories were with all six of us just packed in the car, and you can imagine with all of these big kids and everything. So here are four kids in the back seat just kind of sitting upright, and may maybe we could get three in the front. Maybe we did. Uh, but then we always liked all-night driving, you know, just mm -hmm. get in the car and drive all, all night. and. So I remember many of those trips, going to uh, Colorado and to go skiing, or going to uh, uh, Chicago to Grandma and Grandpa Burtness's, or out to Urbana to the Roger Burtness's, or out to Portland to see my folks and my sisters out there, and, and uh, of course to Holden Village, and all of those were kind of all night driving, because mm -hmm. you could manage to change drivers and yeah. so forth. And then we would hear stories, stories that, from the back seat, that we had never heard, that we never knew happened. <laughs> but in the middle of the night, you know, when the kids start talking and everything, then all of these things come come up, and we think, what, what, <laughs> what happened there? Uh, <clears throat> stories we had really never heard of. Uh, Holden during the '70s, every summer for about a month, was was really a real treat. There were things going on all the time. Jim was speaking and the kids were working, uh, waitressing or in the kitchen or in the Maverick crew, all of the carpentry work that they did. And just, and again, I could go on and on about Holden. It was just really a special, special time. And that was all during the 70s. So those, were some of the good, good years that I remember. Then the kids got a little bit older, and then it's college, and it's graduate school, and all kinds of changes and decisions going on. And of course, then there are the marriages, and so now we have Wally and Michelle <laughs> <laughs> to join the family, who are such a, a real part of the family, such a rich part of the family that I can't imagine life without them <laughs> in the family. And they are marvelous spouses and parents and in-laws, children-in-laws, and uh, again, just a real, real blessing to have, to have them as part of the family. And of course, after that come the grandchildren. <laughs> <laughs> and so we have Matt and Alex and Laura, and now Jess, to join as Alex's fiance, and then Bert and Anna, and Anton and Lily. So, so all of these children, and who knows what <clears throat> the next years are going to bring. I mean, just think of all of the decisions yeah. that are going to be made by you and all of all of them. What are you going to do? What are you going to be? What are you going to? Where are you going to go to school? And it's just unbelievable all the things that you kids are going to do. I mean, I think of Anna in Greece right now. Well, where are you going to be <laughs> every summer forever? <laughs> what are you going to be doing? Uh, I would just like to take each one of you and just brag about each one of you, everything that you have done. It's, it's just amazing. I mean, that you did all of that in England and mm. went through all of that and could have decided to stay in England. But I'm real, real happy that you <laughs> came home and decided to stay in the U.S. of A. <clears throat> well, 
Well, then at the cabin and then seeing all of you cousins together is another, I keep saying the word blessing, but it is just a real, real blessing. And I think we're having a thunderstorm <laughs> right now as we sweep, speak. But to look out at the lake and seeing all of you bobbing around on the floaties, just floating, all of you together, and uh, talking and talking and laughing and laughing, I think, I think for hours, really hours yeah. at a time. It was uh, just really, and then just floating along, and then these big outbursts of, of laughter, and then around the dinner table, and water skiing, and surfboarding, and tubing, and swimming, and playing the games, and playing uh, catchphrase, and scrabble, and magic. I mean, the games were just really, really fun, weren't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. that was good. And uh, <clears throat> staying up until the wee hours of the night <laughs> with loud, loud conversations <laughs> and, again, real outbursts of Latin laughter all the time. So we're at the cabin now, and we have been here for about five, six days. And you came from all over the United States, Matthew from Tacoma, Washington, teaching first grade. I mean, mm -hmm. just amazing. And uh, Laura coming from uh, California, from Santa Clara uh, University and water polo and all the things that she has done. Eric coming from Oregon. Those are the West Coast people that we have. Uh, being a pastor in Redmond, Oregon, where we all want to go sometime and see all the beautiful things there. Peter and Michelle from Westfield and Anton and Lily, Peter and Michelle both working there and going into the big city every, uh, well, quite often anyway. Yeah. Anton getting ready for Rutgers, I think that's just kind of amazing. Yeah. I think you'll probably love it. And Lily going into her junior year of high school and doing everything that she's doing and all of the track and cross country and everything, it, it is just amazing. Uh, <clears throat> Jess coming from Baltimore, Maryland, Alex's fiance, and coming into the family the first time not knowing anyone, and uh, just coming in and fitting right in and feeling like you know her right away, D didn't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was really fun to have her here. Yeah, it really was. Right in. And get to know her a little bit. That was just amazing. And Alex coming from Florida, from uh, Panama City in the Navy and kind of wondering what all he's going to be doing in the next yeah. couple of years. I think you have to go down to Florida and visit him, don't you? That would be fun, that would be a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah, that would be great. Bert coming from the University of Chicago, having graduated from university, and now this next year having a year fellowship right down, well, you have to go to Chicago yeah. and visit Bert too. <laughs> Lots of places to go. Lots of places to go. And uh, <clears throat> Deb and Wally, of course, in St. Paul, both of them doing their work, their lawyer, lawyering work and everything else that they do. Anna, of course, that was sad. Yeah. I mean, not to have Anna here mm -hmm. was just really, really, really too bad. We just all missed her so much. But of course, she's in Greece, in Athens. I mean, it was a, yep. <laughs> a good excuse for not, <laughs> for not coming. But uh, she she always l liked all of the cousins so much, and I remember last year you and she just and Lily were just kind of hanging together all the time, just yeah. really really having a good time. And I from my apartment in St. Paul. So the cousins absolutely love to be together, and all of the parents love to see it too. Just love to see you doing everything that you're doing. I'm going to start crying probably, but that's okay. I kind of, you know, but thinking about it, it has been just an, a marvelous time. Just love to have you here, Anton. Yeah, it it was fun. just it's really been great to see everyone. Absolutely great, yeah. And of course, we miss Steve. We miss Jim. Mm. Oh, and <laughs> I miss them every single day. Uh, but life does go on. Yep. I think that's it. I think that's the end of this particular one. 
but, but it's been good to be here, and it's been great to have these talks, Grandma. Oh, Anton, I just loved it. I just loved to, <laughs> and I love to hear you talk about the, all of the things that you're doing, and yeah. and it's going to be just a marvelous year for you. Yep, be an interesting few years for everyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we'll have to get together again. Yep. <laughs> hopefully every summer. Oh, hopefully every <laughs> summer. That's right. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs>